Hello, good morning, good morning. Today is the day. Let's see. I'm going to do this whole streaming thing, so it's going to take me a second to like get my legs here. Hello, hello. Yeah, this is actually, this isn't finished. This is a work in progress painting that I have up on the board. Uh, it's going to be the thing I'm going to work on next. I haven't put the study up yet. I'm just getting organized, all right? I just went live. Give me a break. Just get my coffee. Study material. Uh, I think I was going to do this one today. Four point six. Ah uh, yes, good afternoon Europe. It's <laughs> it's either going to be everyone on here is either going to be East Coast or Europe probably, unless we've got some real um, grusslers on the West Coast that are up at five a.m. You know, getting their grind going, answering their emails, watching Twitch at the same time. I'm planning on doing my daily stream starting at noon most days, but today I wanted to get things started and I'm booked. I've got a, a talk on a New Masters Academy Discord at like noon, and I've got to go see Oppenheimer at three. So I figured rather than cancel the stream, I just run it early for you European folk, and uh, it's all gonna be all good. Um, if you, let's see, I'm going to actually, I'm going to just, uh, yeah, not exactly bar. No, we're not doing the Barbenheimer, just the, just the plain old vanilla Heimer. Um, I'm thinking about opening up the discord over. I'm going to leave the permissions open for people to join on discord. If anyone wants to voice chat. Um, let's see, what is the command for this? If you do um, exclamation mark discord, you should be able to get the info to join the discord. I'm here in voice chat if anyone wants to hang out in voice chat with me while I'm uh, doing my study. Um, then there's going to be way less dead air. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll see how that works out. I have a feeling we're probably going to end up having to control chat as it um, just becomes more of a thing. Let's see. How's the camera looking? Pull these closer together. I think it actually the camera actually does a more wide angle view, but for some reason, um, 
the defaults here on OBS want it to uh, be like a 4 by 3 I'm not sure why. Is this where you stream from now? Hey there. Hello. Yeah, I'm streaming on Twitch right now. Today is the first day oh. of Twitch streaming. So does that mean people can hear you speak? Can hear you speak too. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> well, do, you have any, do, you have, do you have any viewers at the moment? Uh, yeah, there's a couple. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I had a bunch of followers from five years ago when I first was doing this. Oh, got a bunch of people who are uh, following now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, yeah, I promoted it on who we on. Uh, and I was gonna say Twitter, but I guess the answer the it's X right now. So yeah, it's like sixteen people viewing. It's like teeny tiny. Nice and cozy. Nice and cozy. Yeah. Is, is there any way for you to share it uh, on the call also, or not on the server also? Show share what? Like the screen, or is that not possible? Oh, hmm. Ah, uh, good question. Let me see if I can do a screen share too. Is that coming through? Oh yeah, I'm seeing it now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and so I guess the screen capture can work just fine across both uh, Twitch and OBS, and then on. Um, On Twitch, there's also a cam where you can see my uh, my keyboard and my and my tablet too. You get a mm -hmm. hand cam. Mm -hmm. So how's it going this morning? Uh, it's going great. I was just up in the other voice channel talking to Eric about uh, story structures. Super interesting. Yeah, Eric's a smart guy. I'm, but he he had, he had never he never walks in a room when I'm in a room. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Maybe it feels like uh, there can only be one per room. Uh, like uh, uh, one right. uh, one more experienced person per room. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got one big brain per room. Otherwise, it's too much brain. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, let's just say it's that. Sure. Yeah, the plan is to like uh, to start to do daily studies and also do some sort of uh, looking over community stuff and inviting people on stage to talk and whatnot uh, mm. through Twitch. Because like you know, I've been broadcasting pretty much daily across uh, di on Discord when I'm around. Like aside from when I was on vacation, I've been like yeah. I've been on, I've been broadcasting on Discord just about every single day, and I want to be able to make it so that more people can join in and watch because. Prospect of having to sign up for a Discord is like a prerequisite for hanging out. It's a little tough, mm -hmm. uh, so I decided to uh, open it up. So we'll see how this whole Twitch, Twitch TV. Thing goes. That guess this is what undertake. Yeah, is that what you'll be doing from now on? Do you think? Yeah, the trick is to. We're gonna, I'm going to try to figure out how to get. The whole thing kind of working on Twitch and Discord simultaneously. So that if people want to hang out and chit chat, they can. And then they're also going to be live on Twitch with me. And then anybody from Twitch who wants to like hang out, join the voice chat. I'm going to need to figure out a way to mod this so that like we have verified people can come in and hang out. Yeah. And then um, if it ends up becoming too many people, we'll, we'll probably uh, have to like moderate how people are able to enter the room. Of course. But um, yeah, it, it's like the plan is to kind of um, make it so there's like community voice thing plus studying happening on on Twitch TV. That's the you know I looked at your your, your Instagram more back and I'm surprised like the, I don't mean this is an insult but like. Your lines are like really dirty, considering the the quality of your stuff. <laughs> like, you mean my line, yeah. my lines on this uh, study I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. You're not like I don't even see you carving the lines that much. No, I I don't yeah. I don't really. I'm I mean I'm working on a pen tablet, so I can't see my hand. 
So it's like it's hard to draw under the with this tool, but beyond that, I also just like I don't take the drawing at this stage very seriously. I'm really trying to just find a block out. Cuz I'm not doing a oh, I'm not doing a drawing. I'm I'm just trying to figure out where all yeah. the landmarks are so that I can get in and start painting. And then you'll solve those problems for that trash you paint. Yeah. 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 Like the whole trick is to try to figure out how to solve one problem at a time. Mm -hmm. And so like I mean, I've done this a few different ways. Like sometimes I'll I'll make the brush a little smaller and I'll just like I'll do tons of little scribbles. And wouldn't the wouldn't the trick be the opposite to solve as many problems as at once as possible? No, absolutely you know? not. the The reason well, why not is because the problem here is that images are too complex to be able to hold every aspect of them in your head at the same time. Uh -huh. So you can try to juggle the lines and the values and the colors and everything all at the exact same time, but there's a decent chance that you're going to get mentally overwhelmed and lose track of some or all of those things. Mm -hmm. So the the trick of process, the reason why you do thumbnails and sketch and color roughs and color studies and all those yeah. things is not because it's like, you know, makes you look smart. <laughs> it's because the, uh, you know, when you do all those things, like you're breaking down the various different visual dimensions into um, it, into smaller pieces to be addressed individually. Do you think there is a a limit where you're doing too much? Like if you're, I remember you were saying uh, a couple of days ago, I think it was about like having a process where you're first thumbnailing and then doing three D Blender blocking and then overlaying that with a. Uh, well, that was a joke. With... I mean, we were talking about uh, trying to come up with the most convoluted process possible uh, uh, as a matter of uh, like showing off. Uh -huh. Like the 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 joke was that like some people were probably developing process specifically to try to make it as horribly complex as possible uh -huh. Uh -huh. so that they could make it so that no one could follow along with them. <laughs> okay. And just making it needlessly time consuming and complicated across like tons of different right. software suites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People who do that, they that's peanut brain. The the <laughs> real geniuses are the ones that do as much work as possible w with literally the most fucking brain dead simple process like just taking a big brush and just going at it and then they make a <laughs> Listen, I, it, that's a, that's my whole thing is like i don't think it's like big brain or peanut brain to like do it simpler or more complicated like whatever works for you because it's like making a finished piece of art at a high level is really hard so like if you can do it like a really super simple way, like if you like if you did it like a printer where you just started at the top and you got every little dot perfectly right as you like went across the entire canvas, like fine, <laughs> great, man, like good for you. But um, you know, like anytime you've ever seen somebody do that in like a YouTube video, it's like it's an optical illusion. It's just like a trick. Like they have like a guide that allows them to do that. Like yeah. the reason why we don't do or that is because we need D. to break things down. Like we have to. I mean, you literally described Kim Jong Gi. That's literally what he does. He just takes like a fucking brush pen and then just renders out the the thing. <laughs> like, um. Yeah. No. I mean, like he. I've seen some people who work a lot more like a printer. Like uh, Greg Manchester yeah. is also another example of like. He'll have sections of a painting where he'll make like one brush stroke, and that'll just be that's there forever. That's just not how it works. Yeah. Um, and like Kim Jong Gi again is like he's a, but he's like a, a weird example. Like I'm pretty sure he was like had a mutant gene or something. Yeah, he did. Um, <laughs> and it's like it's not a case for like oh if you get really good like you'll like Kim Jong Gi you'll be able to do that like. There's no amount of practice that allows you to do that. Kim Jong Gi, that's just like the way he thinks or the way he thought, and like he's, yeah. and like, you know, it, it's just it's a re everyone's process is a reflection of the way that they think through imagery, and some people have like really really weird brains that are able to do incredible things, and like we can't look to them as an example of our future selves. Like they're just them, 
and we're just us. I, I know. That's, exa- that's exactly what I was saying. The simple processes are the ones that freak me out the most. Yeah, the people who can't, people who like don't go through like lots of steps and just go like straight into it, they're, uh, I don't know what their the whole deal is. That's crazy yeah. to me. Like, because like the, the more steps, I found that if you use 3D, it actually makes things a lot easier. Oh, yeah. That's I mean, that, that. that's the reason people do it. Like, no one adds <laughs> stuff to their process because they want to like, like make it more complicated and harder to do. Like, yeah. I mean, I guess you could be be like <laughs> some sort of hipster that's saying, "Oh, I, I always I always use Blender th- to make sure that my perspective is like a thousand percent accurate." But it, and you know, I can do it without it. But I I choose to add extra hours to it to make sure that I'm always flexing on everybody. <laughs> Is this like a value study, or are you going to put color in there? Um, I'll get to color, but I always start with black and white because, again, I'm thinking through one problem at a time. Yeah, all, a lot of the studies that I've done, I just uh, I just start with color. Okay. I've done it where I start with value, and it works, but I, I start with color. Yeah, so um, th- this seems to be a great that, divide. The, the there's the pe- start and color people and the start and value people. And yeah, like, yeah, I don't even start with lines like ninety nine percent of the time. I just uh, I just walk in silhouette. It's kind of a problem though because lines are like knowing how to draw stuff with lines is like so fucking good. So I try to practice that separately. Um, Sometimes I'll mix it together. I'll do I'll do it where I do the lines and and then I'll color it in. I've got some friends who are line people, and like they they're able to create like they're able to design and create stuff to like look better in line than with uh, rendering. And I again I don't relate to it at all. Like trying to do something really good entirely with line to me seems nuts. But you mean like hatching and all that? No, I mean just like just like a really good solid tight drawing. Oh yeah. Like uh, it's just not me. Yeah, I, I can't do that. Uh, uh, I was just drawing the lines for like the for painting and stuff. Usually. Oh, here's my big trick, my mega trick here. This is like not even a trick. This is like this is this is peanut brain, but it is my favorite thing. And if, I mean, if you've seen my studies, like you've seen me do it a million times, where like, I make a, instead of making background behind the image, once I start getting like the landmarks together, oh, I end up doing the out. background over the top. And yeah. I don't know what it is about this, but it's just like having to like carve the whole uh, silhouette out in the negative, and leaving it be chunky like this, is always made me happy and like, made it easier for me to think about the image. I don't know what, why. Yeah, I, I, I do that too. I've always felt like it was kind of like a, it's like a different way of guessing like where things are supposed to go. That's that's kind of how I've always seen it. Like w- when, you, uh, when you paint the background like over the uh, foreground, it's because you're guessing the, uh, the shape of the, the foreground in a different way than building up from the foreground. Does that make sense? That's, that's the way I, I've seen it. Yeah. Cuz I yeah, I always try to do that too. But I, I don't paint over the background. I uh, I merge layers and I just like alternate when I'm carving the shape. I love being able to keep all the different steps of the painting on separate layers. Not cuz I actually do anything with the layers later, but because it like I like being able to people ask me questions about my process and then I can just go into the PSD and show them cuz each of the steps are preserved inside the uh, inside the PSD as like separate layers. So I can peel my way back through time and have it work like a giant history mode. Yeah, I kind of have a problem though, where I can I can do a really good study, but I can't like make anything good original. <laughs> oh, you you're like fully study brained, where you you can only yeah. do the studies, but you can't do the actual for yeah, real fully art. Fully study brained. 
problem. It's a real problem. It's I, I'd heard, I'd seen it so much. I think that that's part of the reason why I got um, freaked out and like never did studies because I never wanted to end up as one of the study people who was permanently trapped in, in like study land forever. Just wanted to say good morning. Good morning. I'm trying to, I'm trying to break away from it by drawing tons of thin boys. What kind of boys? Get it better. What? What are you drawing? Oh, I said I'm drawing tons of thin boys, dude. Thick it's boys? My... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> some of them. <laughs> you really committed to that joke twice, didn't you? Dude, I'm doing a whole fucking James Tussaud study where I'm turning all the women into men. I'm fucking committed beyond, like, autism. <laughs> like... <laughs> I've, I've ascended to a new level. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> it's beyond me. I'm going to go pop in with Eric really quick. He wants to show me something, and I'll be back. <clears throat> okay. You know, sometimes it's not... I, I've got, I'm done asking, should I? You know, it's more, can I? <laughs> can, can you do a bunch of fine art studies where you change all of the thick ladies into thick boys? Yes, exactly. I mean... Absolutely, you can. I'm, I'm a hundred percent behind you. <laughs> it's my fucking mission. It's your, decided, it's your destiny. It's your fate. Yeah, I decided to do it with a James Tussaud painting, just to make it like, make sure I'm really just drawing like thirty figures. <laughs> you, you know who James hey, Tussaud is? No. Oh uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll show you. I'm not so good with my art history. Yeah, he, he was, he was like one of those like other level types he's kind of like you know how like you know different periods you got like the fucking michelangelo types he was one, he was one of those like like look at this fucking painting all right where is this are you on live yeah yeah, yeah. look at that this, this is james Tito painting oh okay he, yeah play by the way he did this thing he had this uh funny little easter egg he put in all his paintings uh where there's always somebody looking at you, so you could play Where's Waldo with his fucking paintings. It's fucking you great, dude. Out. See, there they are. <laughs> this guy was goofy. <laughs> hey, Pete, I had a, I had a question regarding like fantasy, uh, creatures like a, a Minotaur, for example. How do you give, and I don't mean like a, like. Furry art, but like um, <laughs> giving realistic fantasy, like animals, like human esque facial expressions, like without being, you know, pushing in some of the like craziness where it's like not possible at all. Like, I have an example before, like, I have an example of one that I think is really good, but um, I mean, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, the done. trick is that you, you yeah. find a good example and you steal from it. It's like, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, you, like the trick like, is that know, you I need a backwards engineer. Done. Like, what about that example? You feel like works, and, and the, if and you can do you, that, you got it. The more you steal from other artists, okay. the more you realize how much other artists are stealing from each other. Yeah. Like, like especially with like manga artists. Like I was talking about this the other day. Like manga yeah. artists, they have time when you break down like panel by panel, like lots of manga you'll find that they're using like the same pen placements a lot like over and over and over yeah again. this the the same this like ten a weird one it's yeah but this that's was weird because it's it's hard to find good like humanoid animal fantasy stuff that isn't like over sexualized or furry which is like People can draw whatever the fuck they want, but it's just not what I'm after, and it's hard to find good examples. <laughs> so I was just wondering. So you're like, searching I, I like I haven't seen you do. You're, you're searching like uh, uh, dog man, not sexy. It's like <laughs> I'm. <laughs> it sounds I'm like you're like trying to like, reenact a drill tweet. No, I'm trying to. I just literally look up fantasy art and on Pinterest and just go and go. Like if I, if I include animal in it, like it's just uh, instantaneously, it's just, it's just shit I don't want to see. <laughs> so, like I just have to like do it long form and find one I like, 
and then click that, and then I, I it opens up a, a decent thread of other examples. But all right, I mean, if 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 that's that, that's all good. Thank you. I mean, it's like when it comes to specific stuff. Like generally, what my yeah. like thoughts on the topic are that like there's no secret knowledge out there. Mm -hmm. That it's not like someone's going to be like, oh, the trick is that you always look for this one thing, and then when you see it, then you've unlocked it. It's like, you know, with everything with art is like it's an interlocking set of like separate disciplines that kind of come together to be able to do a thing. And so when someone's able to do something really specific, like a really specific skill set, like, oh, they're really good at drawing expressive, uh, like, animal characters that don't look like furries. It's like, that's not, that's probably not one skill, and it's not like one trick. It's probably like an intersection of their knowledge about animal anatomy and people anatomy and like how to make a character expressive with a human face and like, um, yeah. when you combine all those things together, the intersection of them builds this like hybrid skill that is kind of specialized. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like in this guy's case, it seems like he merges different likeness of different species, like whether it be goblin or orc, into um, like an animal face, so that it doesn't quite look human. But it's it's definitely not like, for instance, the one I linked was just like a goat dude. I love goats. Goats are my favorite. Mm -hmm. But. Um, but it's very goblin esque in his actual like facial structure, but it's you know, it's definitely a goat, you know. So sure. it's not like it's not running away from what it's supposed to be. So I think I definitely you're right. It's just uh this dude's probably honed this particular skill set for a long time and so Yeah, I mean and it, his portfolio it, it, lends itself to that too. A lot of it is, you know, an expressed interest. You know, somebody's got yeah. somebody loves like drawing goblins and then they draw a million fucking goblins and then they're really good at drawing goblins like that's yeah it, it it's rarely more complicated than that you're right but like you're right. you know the, there's a lot of nuance that builds up like when you do the same thing over and over again you're not just learning one skill you're like kind of um accumulating a bunch of small skills that add up to that one thing and then those skills will then be useful for any other things that like use the same kind of sub sub skill. So like learning how to draw a bunch of goblins will probably help you uh, draw a caricature as well. You know, so there's probably some like weird minor overlaps between um, you know whatever you're learning and some other adjacent topic. And the more you kind of like poke around, the more you keep finding your way into these little doors. Yeah, but like you know, one of the reasons I'm doing these daily studies is because like one of the skills that I'm been historically pretty bad at is being able to like look at a thing and then reproduce it in a way where like the proportions are correct. Like spotting mm -hmm. proportions is something that like um, I've never been good at, and that I never ended up needing to practice because I was drawing everything out of my head. But then when it came to actually trying to use reference for stuff, I couldn't do it unless I was like tracing over it. And uh, I was like, man, I sure wish I could be able to just like go and do life drawing or whatever and be able to spot the proportions more easily. And so doing these kinds of photo studies is, I'm learning all kinds of stuff subconsciously, but also like I'm consciously getting better at being able to like spot the proportions. Um, right. When I first started this like, a couple months ago, I was I just like couldn't see it. I felt like uh, I felt like I was constantly getting like uh, having a magician pull a prank on me, where like every time I tried to to replicate the thing, it would like be off by enough to make it like so. I, I was always feeling like permanently lost. But like now, I feel like over time, I've just got this growing sense of being able to just see it, and that that power to like just see it feels great to have mm -hmm. one of the things that keeps bringing me back is that i can day to day notice that feeling getting better the more i do it and so like being sensitive to that progress makes the progress of like doing these kinds of studies feel really good and i'm sure like it's also for you having such a strong background in other other like styles um 
it's like almost exponential growth where things are just compounding. So this new information is just building off of your ex ex like expansive previous knowledge. And so it like it clicks in all sorts of different ways, which is probably super dope. Yeah, there's um, I was finding that like drawing stuff, drawing like um, human figures out of my head. I was like after just like a week or two of doing this, I was instantly better at it. Mm -hmm. just because like I had a certain amount of like library of knowledge built up, but this, uh, these studies like hooking into that allowed me to really quickly make a lot of connections. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. I, I know I've, I, I, I find myself falling into the terrible habit of being like, how can I do this more efficiently? And, than having to remind myself that this isn't a linear process and that I just need to show up and doodle poorly and do that consistently until, you know, I have a foundation of skill to actually work with. But man, is it rough? I, you know, I, 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 I said like last week that no one prepares you for how hard it is to learn like an actually brand new skill as an adult, because usually, you know, like you don't learn hard new things like often as an adult necessarily especially one that you're willingly doing like if i had to learn something hard for a job like i just suck it up and i do it but this is a hobby so forcing myself to show to something that i'm bad at oh man that's really hard yeah i tried to yeah. teach myself uh basic music theory on a keyboard like just mm -hmm. via youtube video and i was showing up to do it for like an hour or two every single day and uh, yeah, after a couple of weeks, I was just like, man, I just trying to do like scales and finger exercises and figure out like how music theory works from a no prior knowledge mm -hmm. as just it felt like I was only retaining about 5% of everything I was learning. And yeah. so like building up a, a body of knowledge felt really, really insurmountable. If but you're, if you're trying to I, I, I just hopefully I can get in here, but if you're trying to learn something that you're like struggling with, like an art, it like let's say if it's like figure drawing, or like you know painting and colored like your 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 study material or or whatever it might be, just set a one hour timer, and during that one hour, it's just your pens down and you're doing what you set out to do, and, yeah, until uh, the the timer's up, and just force yourself to do that every day, and eventually you'll like get in the habit of it and it, it won't really be a problem unless if it's yeah. gesture the moment you stop setting the one hour timer on gesture that's a bad thing because <laughs> you're never yeah, going to be able to learn to like that <laughs> it's it has been um incredibly humbling no, it's been really humbling going between mediums so like I was, i'm a miniature painter and so going from miniature painting back to what i loved doing in middle school and like picking up drawing and then realizing shit i can't just draw what's in my head like i have great ideas in my head but there, there's no shot there's no shot of me putting this on paper right now and then being someone telling me like all right you're gonna need to probably just go practice drawing like figure or form and then faces and then you're gonna probably have to practice doing just hands because that's a whole other study exercise on its own and then like okay oh you're doing fantasy so you kind of have to get creative with your anatomy so that changes everything you've you've like thought you knew prior to this it's like a whole compounding shit sandwich that i have to work through <laughs> but it, it's been fun like you know it's when i'm not being too hard on myself and i just draw something i as long as i'm not comparing it to what i see in the group which you know it's hard but if, if i'm if i make sure that temper my expectations it's usually it's usually pretty fun um but like obviously this is a very catered community and even the baseline skill set in here is generally higher than the vast majority of humans on earth so you know it, it's it's a it's a weird little and yet everyone community. feels like they suck ass <laughs> yeah it's insane i'm telling you everyone i see in here i'm like wow, that's just really good in general. <laughs> and you're like, oh man, I suck. And I'm like, man, now I know what I sounded like to people about my miniature painting who told me I was good and I 
was just like, nah. And I just wish I could jump through the screen and smack everyone upside the head who says they're not good in here. Because, man, there's there's just like a lot of raw talent that happens in this group. And also a lot of practice talent. Not everything's yeah. just... Well, yeah, I, part of the, I think part of the reason people say that they suck is that you never want to get a big head. And when you yeah. get a big head for like the for the first time, you you plateau real quick, yep. and then it's like all of a sudden you're like, I gotta start beating myself up, even in, yeah. if I'm like delusional enough to think that this shit looks good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll be right back. I want to go chat with Eric for a little bit, so I'll see you guys in a second. All right, hey, CJ. Um, I think it's funny that like, I, like having been around like a lot of artists for a long time, like I instead of getting pickier and being like, oh, it turns out everybody sucks. And like, even the people I thought were good at art actually suck. Like, instead I've just been progressively getting more accepting of other people's art and being like, seeing somebody who's just getting started and going like, oh shit, damn, you're like doing really good for where you're at. And it's like, I'm becoming increasingly like more accepting of like the different ways in which people are good at stuff or like what kinds of weird little, um, you know, when I can see a little bit of someone's personality in the work, even if it's not very refined, it's still like I get a, I get a lot of excitement out of like seeing people's work, and it, it's like, you know, it, don't end up getting more like elitist about it over time, which has been nice because like, you know, I've never really aspired to want to be like a picky elitist weirdo. Yeah, those people freak me out, dude. You, I, I, I know exactly what type of person you, you're talking about. I don't like, know. Like they I, think every every step of their process is like blah. Like it's yeah. it's easier to just be accepting of you know people of different yeah. skill levels. It's, yeah, it's, uh, uh, I don't it's even harder know. to be accepting of yourself than it is of others. Um, I don't know, but like, and then you know, I think like there, I I've just like everybody else, I've got challenges about accepting my own work and um. I don't know. Like, I, I think part of it is that I, I'm not like in a hyper competitive environment, where like anything I do good, I do good for my own sake, and then um, it like it makes it easier to be accepting of other people being good in their own way. It makes it takes a little pressure off of me, like um, because I don't have to be proving myself. I'm not like in a studio where everyone is like looking over their shoulder and worried that if they're not good enough, they're going to get fired. Yeah. Have uh, you worked in a studio? Did they really suck that bad? Um, yeah, I've worked uh, in a couple. Like, I had weird experiences. Like, my first studio was, um, it was like a studio that was just being formed for the first time. It was a, it was like a mixture of employees that used to work at a Icelandic company, making a, you know, Eve Online. And so it was like a bunch of like seasoned <laughs> game developers, but they all only ever worked on one very specific weird game. And then a, and then a lot of freelancers who are all being pulled in from the tabletop gaming industry who used to work for White Wolf. So it was like a new studio. So no one quite knew exactly how to do their jobs, but also like were picky about their own weird little corner of interest, you know, whether it was like, EVE Online or World of Darkness or whatever. And uh, and it it was a really unproductive environment. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, there was like a certain amount of like competition. Like everyone in the art department seemed to be really interested in what was happening on a website called CG Hub, which doesn't exist anymore. Right. Um, and I was always... You know, I always felt like a bit of an outsider because I was like, I don't really care who's on the front page of CG Hub. You know, yeah, and I, CG I, Hub, the like CG Society or whatever that thing was. No, was like no, it's different. It okay. like there's no it, it it has no lineage with anything that's out there right now. Like Art Station exists because CG Hub went down. Really? Yeah, Art Station was like some CG Hub user who like built the next thing after CG Hub collapsed. Why did CG Hub? Lap, it, it, like they didn't have a good business model and they like ran out of money and they just shut the doors one day they didn't tell anybody that they were in distress and they just like one day everyone tried to log in and the website was just gone 
They should have pulled the Wikipedia and asked everyone to donate $2. Uh, yeah, or something. I don't know. But, like, this is why I, people keep keep telling me, like, oh, there's no way Twitter is just going to disappear one day. I'm like, I don't know. I've been around the Internet for a while. I've watched websites just disappear. Like, websites that were, like, people's whole portfolios, their whole career was built on this one website, and then they woke up one day. It was just not online. Um. Like that can happen again. I think it will happen again. Maybe not with. Maybe it's Twitter. Maybe it's something else. But like that's going to happen. It's part of the reason that I cross post across everywhere. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking Google. Yeah, like I mean, Google pulls the Google's famous for pulling the plug on random websites all the time. Like they they try to build up like a huge user base on something, and then if it doesn't like fully suit their needs, they just pull the plug on everybody else. Yeah. So you were never like a, you never got stuck in the study trap where all you could do was nice studies. No, I, I didn't. Yeah. So I always thought like, I'm super smart. I never study. I'm so, so good at art. Like I'm good at art because I don't study, you know, and that's, that's not a super productive mindset either. So I, I've been, I'm trying to like thread the needle here and figure out like what would I even recommend for people considering I'm having a blast doing studies. I'm enjoying having it be a part of my day every day. And I also make, you know, my own pieces from scratch. And yeah, only, only original stuff I've really drawn is a lot of them boys. So like, that's kind of how I got it. <laughs> I was like, man, dude, I got to start drawing from my head. Yeah, I mean, I think most like, people get into drawing because they want to draw stuff in their head. Yeah. I mean, some people, yeah. I, I, I guess it's maybe it's just the circles I'm in just because I've been around, like, places where people want to do, like, fantasy art and stuff. Uh, and, like, you know, if you're into fantasy art, you're obviously going to aspire to draw stuff out of your head. And, uh, you know, my specialization right now is definitely the uh, thin boy drawing. Uh, I, I don't, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's my, kind of my thing. All right. <laughs> I'm not, I might not be the best at it yet, but, uh. Don't worry, friend. One day. Wait, yeah, one day. One, one of these day, days. They will call you the femboy goat. Yes. God of the femboys. <laughs> well, what? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure out like what is a prescriptive way of helping somebody like get better at drawing out of their head, like, because I I think like if I want to make like uh, community challenges that are going to help people like accomplish their goal regardless of what it is, and so it's like if somebody wants to learn how to draw out of their head, like I want to encourage them to do something daily or like participate in weekly challenges that help with that. Because if you just do studies or like color other people's line art and stuff, you're never actually going to get better at those things. Ooh, um, can I make a suggestion? Yes. I, I like went through this recently. Yeah. Like, and I have I have sketchbooks to prove it. Where like I went from like not being able to draw stuff out of my head to able to draw stuff out of my head in like a sketchbook. Um. And like I don't know I. I I, I feel like I've said this before, but like the thing that works and works really really fast is you just like do a study um, or several studies and then you like try to do the same thing out of your head. Yep. Like you do like a page of yeah. like characters yeah. and perspectives. I've done that with pages and pages of thin boys, dude. Yeah, you and you're probably decent at it art. now. Yeah, <laughs> like and it doesn't even it doesn't even take that long. It takes like a month if you like do it every day for a couple hours. But like, I still I still month, use I references, but like I mean the main reason I use references is for the placement now like it's it's literally just like and uh, you know it's hard because you look at all the other people doing it they, they're doing the same thing they copy placements from like a bunch of other artists and like what they'll do is they'll like segment compositions to make it look more original so like they'll you know i i, I can't really describe in detail the examples where i've seen this but trust me because <laughs> you know you know what i'd be out there breaking down but uh, basically, uh, what what I'm saying is is that like, you know, I'll see a composition and I'll be like, I've seen this before, and I know how to extend it out into a larger into a larger panel. Like I know I know what this body is doing and like how to like continue this drawing. Does that make sense? 
like if, if you segment it out and then pull it into a, a, a larger thing because i i've seen it and i've drawn it in the in another in another uh like area like it, it's really like this like i was talking about, it's like the same 10 compositions same 10 poses over and over again and like so much manga like like just like look through break it down and then you'll see you're finding the same poses a lot you're finding the same placements a lot and uh, there's actually very little like originality uh sort of um yeah uh like i was just gonna suggest like doing like doing studies and then immediately doing the same thing out of your head yep um makes you yeah, that's, that's get a lot better at drawing out of your head a lot faster and you can ease into it a little bit because like it's just a little homework assignment you give yourself every day you only have to think about it for like an hour you don't have to worry about whether or not it turns out good um and you'll get results pretty fast the other thing that i found extremely extremely helpful was learning a little bit of intuitive perspective you don't necessarily have to be like kim jong gi or scott robertson but like it's very helpful to be able to kind of eyeball like a cube that looks at least like it's mostly in the correct perspective yeah all right so i want you to break down for me a little bit about this like drawing from reference process like can you get how specific can you get about like how you went through this here i can i can literally just like show you what well, I was. Doing. the only problem is like <laughs> i want to <laughs> want to go through it but like i'm streaming on twitch right now and oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so right. this is. I need to make this more cl clear. That the the streamer throne is where I'm going. I like. I'm broadcasting right now. So there's oh. 24 people oh, watching okay. us. So All like, right. then yeah. only my screen's visible, and I don't have a really good way of like sharing what other people are showing me on on Discord. Hi, internet. Yeah. Don't say anything dumb. Don't say oh, anything. Shit. Dumb. Don't say anything dumb. Oh. So you're, you're Wait, are we, are we study all... process? I'm what? Confused. Uh, are we all live? Like, yes. Is everyone hearing us? <laughs> Just the uh, audio, yeah. The audio from this room is going out on the Twitch stream. <laughs> so we can say whatever we want. <laughs> so <laughs> the goat's been going off about drawing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking about that. So like, I'm trying to figure out what the format of this is because like, I really like having people with voice chatting me while I'm like doing studies and stuff. Uh, so like while I'm streaming this, it it's great to have like Discord buddies on here. And if anybody from the chat wants to join, it, just you know the command Discord will give you a link to Discord uh, to be able to come join the Huckleberry Discord where the voice chat is. But yeah, we might end up having to like moderate a little bit. Like people have verified roles, and then there's a little bit more info about like hey this this channel is like currently streaming live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, sure. I, I don't want to catch anybody off guard, but I also like would love for people to come join me and hang out and chit chat while while I'm streaming. Yeah, I cer I certainly don't mind, but now I I will be sure to I don't know I haven't said anything. Don't bad, say your but... home address. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want my social security number, my yeah. credit card, my date of birth? Yeah. I mean, what do you want? <laughs> uh, I want you to start say, sing. Let's okay. Let's all do some acapella Taylor Swift songs to see if the uh, content ID works. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's but... genius. Jokes on you, Twitch viewers. I want pizzas sent to my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, here's my address. Here you go. Um, but Jazz, I was wondering. I know this is like really unlikely, but have you worked on Goblin guitarist at all? And I know you probably haven't, but I think about it every day. <laughs> Goblin guitarist. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I uh I I was just like drawing like dumb god. We were talking about fantasy art and I was just like drawing dumb goblins like as like a joke and one of them turned out really awesome. And I like saved it in case I ever want to like do something with it. Oh, okay. Um, it, well, it started about. no. Hold on. Oh, yeah. You're missing a huge part. It was a goblin with a mullet and I was like give it a guitar. That's how this works. Mullet guitar. So, All right. Yeah. So uh, I want to go circle back on like the like how to get good at drawing from imagination thing. It's like yeah. So okay, sure. so I'm doing a photo study right now. Like, uh, are are you talking about doing specific anatomy studies or like these more general photo studies? Like, what kind of studies are you doing that like you do prior to your imaginative work? Um, it depends on what you want to do. 
Um, like basically whatever it is, whatever the kind of thing you want to be doing out of your imagination is, you need to be doing studies that like reflect that in some way. Mm -hmm. And it's also probably a good idea, um, to have like a good grasp of like intuitive perspective. So what I did that, um, helped me go from like, um, not able to really like draw out of my head at all to like reasonably decent at drawing out of my head was um first i did a bunch of perspective drills where i was just drawing like cubes and things i was i was going through like how to draw by scott robertson and giving myself little homework assignments um and the homework assignments were things like just draw a treasure chest like design treasure chests in perspective um yeah and like doing that for like it didn't even take a month it was like a few weeks i went from like every time i try to draw anything in perspective right like it just looking weird and me not knowing why and then thinking like oh i need to be i need to learn how to construct vanishing points and stuff i went from that to being able to just eyeball like whether or not a cube looks like it's in perspective and being able to like invent little details on a cube to turn it into like a simple object of some kind um so i did that um and then i was like oh but i'm still not drawing good characters from like tricky camera angles and things like that so I thought, well, why don't I just like give myself permission to like be bad at it and just like draw like a bunch of like download a bunch of images of like characters and weird poses with lots of foreshortening and do quick little studies like, you know, two to five minute like just construction drawings, fill a page in my sketchbook. It would take me about an hour. And then I would do the same thing again from my imagination. Like I would just fill a page with like 10 or 15 drawings of characters and weird poses that I was making up out of my head. Um, and they went from unbelievably horrible at the beginning of the month to like, like, like actually rather decent. Like I was no like Kim Jong Gi or anything by the end of it, but like I could, I could draw, I could make up weird poses and like draw three dimensional looking characters from like pretty much any camera angle and that kind of thing. And then that was a really good basis to go forward and start like making characters that had like clothes and stuff and weren't just like constructed mannequin drawings. Mm -hmm. um, and the way I got good at that was um, tons and tons of like thumbnail studies. Like I would, I would literally just set like a time, like a repeating timer on like Google um, and just like find a bunch of art where like I liked the designs of like the characters um, I would make myself uh, just like draw them in like five minutes each. I, originally, the goal was to do like two minutes each, but I was like too bad to like do that at first. <laughs> um, I think I think it might have actually been ten minutes at first. I had to set for me to like actually hit the goal, but I just I just lowered the difficulty as much as I needed to, right? Um, and then just did some like bad thumbnail drawings from reference. And then I would do some out of my head. And again, set a timer, lower the difficulty as much as I need to. And um, it felt pretty hopeless at first. Um, but after about a week of doing it, I had a couple successes. And then after like a month of doing it, like there were like a decent proportion of them were successful. And I was doing them in like five minutes instead of 10 minutes. Um, and now everybody tells me I'm like fast at drawing. Um, and I think drawing and design are probably like my biggest strengths. Not that I'm like the best ever at them or anything, but like relative to like my other skills. Um, and uh, I, I got there pretty fast. Like I went from like not being able to do that stuff at all to like it being my best thing in like not that long um, in more or less the way I just described. Um, and the main challenge wasn't so much doing the thing as it was like accepting that like I'm not going to be good at the stuff immediately. I feel like artists need sort of like art therapy sessions as much as they need homework assignments. Yeah. Like the real thing that I think is stopping most people who wish they could draw out of their head, who can't from doing it. Um, the ones who are stuck in like study hell or whatever is just sort of like their self-esteem is bound up in it. I, th um, I think y'all are, I think y'all are a misunderstanding like like so this is something i've observed like there's so many people out there that say they can draw out of their head and it's like they're they are very constricted and they're not willing to admit that they can't just fucking vomit like 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 this james to painting i'm looking at that guy would draw out of his paint out of his head all the time and he would literally just like vomit this super fucking dense crowded composition with just like immeasurable detail like that's what i don't get like i can get like drawing a figure out of your head 
or like maybe pulling up a reference and kind of like revamping it. You know, I've done, you know, I've done all that, but like, I know how it works. Like, like I know that it's it's mainly just the it, like remembering the process. Like, just reminder: this, this isn't just for you, but this is also like a general audience thing. Okay, okay. I, I mean, I was just I was just like saying that too. Like at the same time, like like that's something that I've observed. Does that I make don't... sense? I don't I'm I'm actually not a fan of like trying to remember exactly what your studies looks like. That's why I'm a big fan of the constructive drawing, right? Like you need a way of sort of figuring out what things look like when you don't have reference. Um and like to do that you need to be able to like build things up in sort of like three D space. Like if you're stuck sort of like reproducing things you've drawn before, it's gonna like constrict you somewhat and you're never gonna feel like really free when you're like drawing out of your head. Yeah, I, um, I, I recorded. I just like wrote down what Jazz said, so we can recap if that matters. Do uh, you want to do a recap? Recap that shit. Yeah. So it's do references that are relevant to the space that you're trying to work in. Um, do simple perspective drills like chests, cubes, etc. Have to give yourself permission to be bad every once in a while and just do you know five to ten minutes of weird pose gestures, a gesture drawing. Um, then do gesture drawing from your head and then simple thumbnail exercises uh, from reference and then uh, thumbnail exercises from your own head um, and then temper your expectations and sometimes just let go. And then then you briefly uh, talked about constructive drawing instead of re replicating things you've already done. Um, yeah, that's a pretty accurate recap in my estimation. Go cool. you. I just figured since we have people viewing, we might as I don't, I don't know. I was trying to, I was I trying to put it in bite size because there was a long conversation, but I just wanted to make sure people got the general idea. I could, I could be wrong. Like I feel like artists do this thing where like everybody is trying different things to try to get better, and yeah. like everybody has like a thing they fix on that they like give credit to like why they're able to do what they do, and like sometimes there's like an actual causal relationship there and other times it's just their like weird placebo totem that they like wave yeah. around <laughs> and like give credit for everything so like you know maybe that, i'm just doing that but yeah i feel like that's everyone who says that like Drawbox is some end all be all youtube channel that's going to turn you into the greatest no like, it won't by like itself no, I mean, you, can, <laughs> you can credit something and say hey like i think this was a big part of my success but also you can just present it as a, a tool for someone's toolbox. Like it may have yeah. worked tremendously for you, Jazz. And let's just say theoretically that this is exactly what made you good. Um, it might not make everyone, uh, you might not see the same success from everyone, but if someone is struggling, be like, okay, hey, here's a bunch of drills that I've recorded that I've heard from a bunch of different creators and I'm struggling. So I'll just pick one and I'll try it for a while. So it's not like it's not necessarily a a course that someone has to follow, but it is still relevant information for people stuck to try. So, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to develop a course though. So like I'm really thinking about, you know, what are the best practices for this? Because I only know the way I learned how to do it, and then I watch everybody else. Seems like they all ha have a different set of needs, and yeah. I don't know how much of that is like me encountering people who are already sort of down the track of learning to a degree. Because a lot of the people I've mentored over the years are like, you know, they graduated from college a couple of years prior, but they didn't feel prepared to like enter the workforce and they're mm -hmm. working on their portfolio, but they're struggling and they're kind of stuck and I, I'm able to help them get unstuck. Um, yeah. But I mean, for a cold new, start, so. I'm just like, I don't know, draw, draw in your sketchbook or whatever, which is not that useful as far as like prescriptive advice goes. Mm -hmm. Like, right. I wish so I had better like, prescriptive yeah. advice on how to help people through those early steps because it's, it's a point in education where I just don't have a ton of experience. Yeah. I actually think that is good advice, just drawing your sketchbook. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good advice, but it's like it's easy. I can see where people would really get easily demotivated because they, like, do some bad sketches in their sketchbook and they're like, oh, my God, I've got 10 years of sucking ahead of me. Like, I don't yeah. think I can yeah. stomach at. that. And I just they don't have ten years. No, it's not. It's not ten years. It's like it, and it really depends on like what, 
like I, I think people get different results depending on whether or not they're like using educational like strategies that really work for them or not. Because I think that some people are using strategies that are like terribly wrong for them and then they don't get good results and they don't know what else to do. Um, and then I also, you know, and then you, you have somebody, you know somebody who's like doing the this, this same exact thing, getting incredible results and they just make you feel dumb because you're like, you know, you're not, you're not getting the same results that they are and like you see other people yeah. around you, like they look like they're just naturally better. In a lot of cases, they're just uh, spent more time on it. Um, but like trying to figure out how to make it feel worthwhile from the beginning and like feel fun and interesting from the beginning is like the, the thing I'm really trying to solve for. Cause I think that as long as, long as it's fun and interesting for people, like they're gonna stick with it even when they are bad at it. Like Yeah, I I'm like brand new, so a lot of the advice I've gotten in here has been just draw and like it's fine. I get it. Um <laughs> but I'm at it's kind I'm of definitely correct. At de- yeah, right. Like I, I'm feeling demotivated myself a little bit. Like I just took like two days off from drawing because I was like, man, everything that's in my head is not getting to paper like nothing i'm, I'm saying like, oh that's but that's the big it. secret this is there's some big brain advice right here uh nobody's it nobody's imagination yeah. goes onto the paper like that's not what is happening in an artist's head when they're when they're going through an idea like the thinking like people don't musicians don't compose in their head and then write it down on sheet music and then sit at the piano and play it the first time they like compose at the piano they compose yeah. on the guitar like you you uh all creative people compose in their medium so like you know a lot of times people when artists sit down to go create an original work oftentimes you know they have like some idea of like a mood or a silhouette or like a personality or something they're gonna do But as far as like knowing what it looks like in their head, having like holding an image in their head and trying to trace it, like that's not typical. Uh, There's there's cases where it can happen, but it's like uh, most people, some some artists I know, even professional artists have no uh, ability, no, no mind's eye at all. And it really is a matter of like putting stuff down on the page and then progressively following it forwards. Yeah, I mean, here, here's what I'll tell you. If you know, I'm I'm a reasonable tenant for trying, like, brand new coursework, like coursework for brand new people. So if you have ideas, um, feel free to just like th- toss me some exercises. I will. Um, like, uh, to be honest, I'm going to go ahead and try pretty much verbatim what Jazz just suggested. I'm not going to throw you on the grill, Jazz, but you know, like, I'm going to try it. And it, you know, it's obviously all. It sounds like good stuff to me. I really, I really would yeah. be excited to see what you come back with. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and, you know, I'll, I don't necessarily might not have time to start hardcore today, but because um, my AC went out in my house. So like, we're not me and my partner are not in our homes. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'll give you an honest try. Try, um, try going on like drawbox.com or like okay. looking at Scott Robertson's book or something like that, just any perspective resource. It doesn't matter which okay. one. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm gonna, uh, I just have to say this right now. If you're anything like me, you're gonna go on drawbox.com. You're gonna go on, the, get the Scott Robertson book and you're gonna like hate what everything, everything it's telling you to do. So this is where that timer comes in. Um, okay. <laughs> That's how I felt. I hate drawing all those fucking primitive shapes, dude. I had to set a timer for me to do it every day. Don't um, don't go like super crazy, and don't worry about like some of the crazy exercises you're gonna see where people are like constructing like spiral staircases accurately sure. and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, not necessary. Um, just worry about like um, how to draw like you know, cubes and things and perspectives right. so that they look a little bit more accurate. And then okay. um, try to do it out of your head um, and just do that for like a couple hours a day tops yeah. for like a week. And like eventually you'll start to get a little bit more accurate with your cubes. Um, and then from there, um, uh, like start constructing like simple objects in perspective. Do do something that you enjoy. Like don't do treasure chests if you don't get excited by the idea of like making ornate treasure chests. 
Um, like, I just did that because it excites me a little bit. Just pick something simple and easy that you like. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm probably just going to stick with Cheshire Cheddar. Like, I, you know, I'll be honest. What I like is, like, uh, probably just far too complicated for what I need to be doing. So it's not really going to be necessarily about, like, what I love. Um, but I'll tell you what I, I I'm a complete just, like, poor for improvement so you know if if i'm improving man I, i'll stick with just about anything so um yeah i mean i'll give it, i'll give it an honest shot and i'll start as soon as i can and after about a month i'll i'll let you guys i mean you i'll probably be streaming so you guys can kind of see where i'm at but about after about a month pete i'll let you know how i genuinely felt about it and i'm just one person but um maybe there should be a call to action to maybe get some new artists um, to make themselves a little bit more known and work through it um, alongside me. So then we can give some feedback to you about uh, for your course. Because right now your your Discord is almost exclusively like, like I was saying, above average artists. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, re yeah, I really want to get some more people to try this stuff out that are, uh, yeah. r you know, day one beginners. Yep. Um, and so one of the hopes is to try to get more people in here that are art curious, that are not really doing anything yet. But, um, you know, we're, we're taking it all bit by bit. That's one of those, right. those things on the board that's going to come together over time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really, like right now I've just been doing these photo studies and inviting other people to do this sort of thing alongside me just because it's like, it's hard to say that you get zero education out of it. Yeah. Oh, you know what an awesome exercise is that helps you develop um, intuitive perspective? Hmm. Um, you might, I don't know, you might want to do a little bit of like just drawing cubes before you do it. But like this, this actually made stuff click for me. Um, I'll see if I can find, I think there's examples of people doing this exercise online. But if you, um, but like drawing uh, like turning cubes relative to one another without constructing them with like vanishing points and things like that is real it teaches you a lot of tricks for how to just like suggest perspective without actually finding the vanishing points on things okay so i'm looking at drawbox.com i'm looking at his 250 cubes um challenge um whether or not i do 250 cubes who knows i probably will end up doing 250 but he has it that's doing... Not, that's not uh, too many cubes. That's a... Yeah. For cubes, It doesn't take no that problem. long to draw a cube. He does convergence lines where he has his dropped lines. Would you suggest doing... Like, would you suggest... What I'm asking is, would you do this exercise as written? Oh, yeah. It's on... Um, okay. uh, I don't remember what the exercise is. The, the point isn't to, like, do the ec like a specific exercise the point is to just get familiar with like how things look in perspective and how yeah. like um you know like like you just I, I i i know it sounds dumb but like you have to just like take my word for it like you like something will click eventually if you keep doing it where like you can just eyeball perspective on like yeah. simple forms like cubes and it, it like there's no there's no good reason why it's just like while you were drawing your brain was like unconsciously adapting to like yeah. the thing you've been putting it through because like, that's that that to me answers a question is like that i've been thinking a lot about which is like okay i can get people to um try to do a photo study and then feel good about the results even if they're you know an amateurish result try to like get them into the mindset of like hey it's fun and good to draw even if you're not producing masterworks but like, you know, drawing from imagination requires you to think about stuff in 3D. Like you, you, you have to learn how to think in 3D when working in 2D. And it's one of those things that like, you don't ever really see, you get, you don't get from watching somebody work or watching a, a demo because you never see inside the artist's head and you never see like how much they're contemplating three-dimensional form while they're working. So like, the outside observer is picking up all these two-dimensional inputs while the actual like creator is thinking through three-dimensional problems. And so like at some point if you're going to learn how to draw, you have to like start to learn how to think in 3D, which is not mm -hmm. something that like 
people are challenged to do in most circumstances in their life. So like everyone's naturally kind of bad at it. Yeah. And um, uh, so it's like, it, it, it's like this, it's a difficult problem because you, you know, you, you say, oh, okay, well everyone needs to learn how to do it. But like, it is really boring to just draw a bunch of like basic shapes. And like, I never did that. Like I learned how to do it by just like encountering the problem over and over again in my original paintings rather than in study work. So I know um, it's possible to do that way, but it just, it, you just go through like years of really being super shit at it. Um, I think, I think it's possible to get pretty good at it in like less than years. Um, yeah. I mean, so I, I kind of like spun my wheels and wasted a lot of time doing like detailed photo studies and things like that. Like maybe that stuff did build up a foundation that made me like learn quicker when I finally got around to like it, it, the photo studies build a lot of intuition. Yeah. Um, so it could be the case that like I was, you know, riding that sort of wave and like, that's why it was like so helpful to me, not just like the exercises themselves. Um, but like, I don't know. I, I went from like not being able to draw characters out of my head to being able to draw characters out of my head in like a month. It wasn't it wasn't a month of like 10 hours a day practice. It was a month of like 2 hours a day practice. What if you're a genius? Uh, <laughs> I I doubt it. If I were a genius <laughs> given the amount of time I've like put in this, I'd be like I'd be uh, better were, than I am. Were you but... uh, good at uh, drawing like studies before you started drawing from your head? Uh, I've never had the patience to like make my studies look all that good. I always give up on them after like 3 hours cuz I just I just don't want but to like, sit there. But like, are they are like, they ahead of are they ahead of the curve? Like, I, I, I don't. I mean, that's impossible to really say. Because yeah, like, I have no idea what the curve is. Like, like, can I see one? Uh, because like sure. for for me, it's like some people, like if you're transferring from from reference to drawing from imagination, like it didn't take me too long. Uh, like I didn't get perfect at it, and it's like I have a lot of limitations. But, like, I can draw, like, bodies. You know what I mean? Like, um, so well, what really get, gets me is, like, creating, like, a, an entire, like, coherent thing that, from imagination. That I do not understand. So here's a study I did, like, yesterday. I think I spent a little over an hour on this just trying to, like... Because, um... like, if you were good at studying... Because it's like, I mean, I asked you if you were good at studying before you drew, drew figures. But it was, like, I was mainly just, like like wondering if you had discipline because I mean they're saying you know you there's a reaction about it only taking a month but it would kind of take us make a lot more sense that it only took a month if you had already uh, uh like a foundational discipline in, in 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 painting or something uh yeah I mean like I was my studies were like pretty decent looking um, at that point, um, I feel like my studies That's haven't really improved since then. Like this is probably, uh, they were probably a little worse than this. Um, no, actually they were a lot worse than this. I, um, all this like drawing out of my head made me a lot faster. Um, so like it used to be like doing a study like this would take me hours, but now I can do it in like an hour. Now I have I have a real question. I'm a lefty, and my drawing pad is definitely for righties. <laughs> There's a lefty <laughs> mode. Actually. Yeah, no solution. There is a lefty mode on the uh, Antuos ones, where you can flip them and flip the lefty mode. Nope. Hold on. There's you're lying to me. They have oh, a God lefty and righty mode for Wacom. Is this another thing I just didn't know about? I've been that, literally like, doing is a major. Here quality of life thing god damn it because like you do you want handle. access to the buttons on the left side of your um on the left side of your pad how do i, I thought do that's it? what my right hand was for what side of the buttons on my left it, it, oh oh your pad's different than mine well also you they should be orientable like left or right um, so uh, I just want to circle back to something um, you were saying earlier, Pete, about um, drawing, uh, doing little perspective drills not being very fun. 
Um, I super agree. They're not very fun. Um, but you can make them fun. Um, and, like, that's what I ended up doing, right? Like, I wasn't... It wasn't very fun just, like, doing Scott Robertson, like, constructing spiral staircases and that kind of thing. But, like, drawing, like, anime girls in perspective was fun. Like, I enjoyed it. I was, like, happy with the stuff I was making after a while, after it, like, stopped sucking, like, really bad for, like, the first week. <laughs> um... Uh, but yeah, like I, I, re I don't, I don't recommend, um, just doing technical exercises. Like you want to develop an intuitive sense of perspective. Like for, for me, um, one thing I do a lot is like draw swords and shields and like weird weapons in perspective. Um, and that's really useful because like they're symmetrical hard surface forms, right? Like they have to kind of like read as symmetrical or whatever. Um, but they're not crazy complicated. It's not like a character who has like limbs going in different directions and they have like weird streamers on their clothes and they're holding a sword and a shield and whatever. Right? Um, it's like, it's simple. It's like, you can do it quick. Um, and, uh, you can like iterate rapidly on it, but it's still teaching you about like constructing like three dimensional forms and perspective. And you might actually like some of the things you draw. If you like swords, it doesn't have to be swords. Just whatever you, whatever you swords. like, it's simple. Okay, yeah, hell yeah. Swords are a great thing to, like, draw in perspective. Um, Pete, you just saved my life, because I've been clicking these fucking buttons every time I try to use my arm to draw, and now I, I can just, actually just draw like a normal human being. I, so. I disable all that stuff. Oh, did is there a lefty mode? Yes, yes. It's uh, if, if, For anyone that has a Hui on, if you go to working area, it says rotate, and you just rotate at 180, and then you're good. So, yeah, this is... Yeah, That's now, interesting. Now I, I, I didn't. I uh, I've never heard anyone bring that up before, but I was pretty sure that that exists. Yeah. yeah this is a. Yeah, because I've been drawing with my wrist, so I've been getting a little, lot of chicken scratching, and now I can actually like use my arm without clicking zoom or right click or control Z by accident. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, that's. Boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to you shouldn't have to work around the tools like the you shouldn't have to fight the tools like that all right shouldn't but i'm a lefty so i have to fight every tool i use <laughs> oh um another thing that just occurred to me about studying that i've like kind of noticed recently um i went through a whole year where i was yelling at myself to get better at painting um like my values aren't that great uh, my painting skills are like lagging behind my drawing skills. I've been aware of this for like over a year at this point. Um, and I've been like, I've done a lot of paintings like this past year, done a lot of drawings and then sort of like painted underneath the line art trying to get like, you know, decent painterly results or whatever. And I feel like there hasn't been that much improvement um, over the course of like several months. Like I feel like my drawing actually improved more than my painting did. Yeah, yeah, paint. I. I you bringing that up i just want to bring this up uh painting improved my drawing like a ton because you you get a better understanding of line weight and how line weight interacts with light when you know how when you start learning how light works but like painting is going to take a lot longer in, in my experience so like i'm still like learning shit with painting and i've been paint like i started painting like like crazy amounts like years ago like and it's like i can make some like really cool shit that i'm proud of but at the same time, like, I'll, I'll run into roadblocks, like, constant. So, like, painting just generally, is, in my experience, takes a long time to, to grow. Like, don't expect the, the same speed of growth with painting. I, you, would I, with you know, like, I wonder sometimes if this comes down to, like, people thinking about things differently. Because I never struggled to learn painting. I think, yeah, I think that's overly pessimistic. Um, it's been difficult for me. Um, but I've been just kind of, like grinding like doing imaginative work where there's like painting involved in that kind of thing um i used to do tons of value studies when i was like just starting out um but because i wasn't doing anything for my imagination i guess it didn't help me that much um and i kind of wrote off value studies because of that like i was like oh i did tons of value studies i'm still bad at painting it doesn't work <laughs> um right like but recently, somebody suggested I should do value studies to, like, improve my painting or whatever, because the thing that's holding me back is, like, values big time. And I was, like, initially dismissive. I was like, 
No, I did those like way back in the day when I was just starting. It didn't. It didn't work. I think studying's overrated. Like, there's got to be something else that I'm like missing or whatever. Um, but I actually did it. I sat down and did um, value studies, and because I just like failed at doing paintings out of my head like so many times consecutively, the first time I sat down to do a one-hour value study, I immediately like ten things jumped out at me that I was doing wrong, and I can now, like, go forward and, like, address those issues in my things. And, like, I didn't do that many value studies. I did, like, three, I think. Um, but, like, the next thing I did had, like, way, way, way better values in it. Um, I think there's a... F like, I, I think the synergy between, like, sort of doing studies and then doing stuff out of your head and the two things being like relevant to one another right yeah. doing value studies and then doing a painting where you're trying that's to my intuition that like because i feel like people who get stuck in study hell are never applying what they study and then yeah. it they develop this like progressive allergy to it because they're like worried that it they're not going to be good enough at it and they're not ready and there's this like yep. perception of readiness that like prevents them from ever like digging in too deep on their own ideas and then yep. they just like the if you're never applying like I, the the thing I, I'm pretty convinced of is that like all learning needs to be applied in fairly short order otherwise it doesn't do anything. Yep. Yep. That's been my experience as well. So um, anyway, I, my my way of learning without studying was like I try to draw something out of my head it looks bad and then I look up reference to try to solve why it looks bad. And then yep. I applied inside the painting, which is creates that that loop of like interrogation that you know allows yeah. you to like add to your visual library. Yeah, I've had tons of people like ask me like how to draw um, over the years, and I actually always mention you. Why? Um, Pete. <laughs> um, well, uh, because of the story you just told about how you um, sort of like used reference during your um imaginative work to sort of like improve what i always tell people is there needs to be a feedback loop where you're yeah. observing and then you're creating based on your observation and then you're going back to observing and then you're creating based on your observation and that can take many different forms and i always bring you up as an example of like somebody who did never did formal studies but was still engaged in that like feedback loop yeah and so like i think that we're studying potentially doesn't serve somebody is where they're not appreciating the feedback loop and they're not creating the feedback loop. They're like, they're doing what they can to follow the like letter of the study without ever really respecting like the purpose of it or the intent of it, which is that yeah. like the studying should always be done in pursuit of some other larger like suite of skills. Yeah, um, I also, uh, another thing I like to say that kind of like gets this point across is um, working from your imagination fills your head with good questions the next time you sit down to do a study. Oh my God, yeah. Um, yeah, like I used to do like tons of studies from like anatomical diagrams and it was all like useless. But recently I've been telling people like, eh, anatomy studies are overrated. I've just drawn tons of people and I've gotten like better anatomy that way without ever looking at like diagrams of the stuff or like consciously thinking um, about anatomy. But I recently just happened to find like an anatomical diagram of a foot the other day. And I, I instantly got like 10 times better at drawing feet just by like looking at this one picture because my head had been filled with like all these questions about like, yeah. You go, oh, wait, 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 that's sure the reason it. why that overlaps over there, because it curves around this way. Yep. And, yep. like, I mean, you're talking about this automatic process of, like, having questions in the back of your head that you get answered when you see reference. But, like, yep. the, the question I have is, like, is everybody doing that? Because I know you're doing it. And, like, I think part of the reason you're seeing results is because you're doing that. But I'm not convinced that that's, like, how people – go through this like that they you know you've somehow tapped into some nascent curiosity or latent curiosity that's like keeping you asking questions and then using reference to answer them i remember like there was a time when i was stuck on a painting and i couldn't figure out how like the muscles in the forearm worked and i like i remember like just see, being like in a pool hall and like seeing somebody like lining up a pool shot and going like 
looking at their arm and going like, oh, I get it now. But like, I, yeah. I, I, of course I knew everyone else I was with wasn't thinking the same thing because they're not curious about, well, what are the muscles of the forearm and what, you know, how do they overlap when they're, it's in a certain pose? Like, and so it's entirely possible that somebody who's also trying to learn how to draw is not asking those questions. So like, how do you induce a state of visual curiosity to like have questions in your head all the time that are being answered by like looking at things? Cause like, it, I, it, I, I don't think, think it's good enough to just be answer. like actively interrogate questions as they arise. I think you need to have that mindset that's running all the time. I, I think the answer to your question is like, and right in the story that you were asking, you were making a painting that was beyond the level of your knowledge at that point. Yeah. And to a point where it was obvious to you because of your skill set, like you're like, oh, I, I can tell that the forearm that I'm drawing is wrong, but I don't know what the correct answer is. So I think like being able to like have the guts to make something that you think will probably not work out and just to go for it and to find the answers later once you have your current knowledge down on the piece of paper and then you can interrogate those parts which you don't have enough information on i think that's what generates the curiosity is by taking the ris risks um uh, maybe in new poses or uh new ways of doing things like i think that 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 curiosity where like a thing just like run the, an idea runs in the background that i'm constantly constantly re-asking myself over and over again and like looking for answers in the world around me is something that like is a kind of curiosity I have when it comes to a lot of subjects, uh, whenever it's like an area of interest for me. And I, oh, okay. I think like I hear, hear that described from other people who get way into something, but I don't yeah. think it's like the default way of people thinking about okay, yeah, trying yeah. to learn because they just, they're not naturally getting like that autistically obsessed with like. I, I learn uh, really, really, really heavy through observation. Um, I mentioned it like a few days ago, but um, I, for me, when, when I miniature paint, I might only miniature paint about uh, three to four, maybe five months out of the year. And then I will take a super long break. But I was I was saying that every time I come back, I'm like most uh, definitely like objectively better as a painter. And that's because um, while I'm away from the hobby, I'm observing like a stupid amount obsessively. Yeah. Um, I, I will look at other uh, paint jobs that I'm just completely obsessed with, I love, and I will, I will try to compare their lighting with reality, and then I'll try to like find. I will be on like re I'll be really keenly aware of the lighting in my environment in real life, and then I will try to be like, oh, this is the lighting that they used to get this result because like um, daylight is kind of boring. Uh, it kind of just washes out everything but if you find like really soft diffuse lighting it starts getting really really interesting and volumes start being more interesting and, and you can really start making out what you're looking at without it being so like blasted and um yeah and and i'll just observe obsessively well i got like that's stupid. that's the thing is like i really i really believe that there's a possibility that it's the curiosity that works and not the exercises themselves the exercises are there to like collaborate with the curiosity They're like you know you should be asking questions of things but like I, every time i say oh yeah i i just use the reference to answer questions i i get this sense that like the people some people really know what i'm saying and some people are nodding their heads and have absolutely no lived experience where they're like <laughs> yes i had visual questions and then i saw a reference and i like understood the way in which the reference answered those questions like it, you, to some yeah. people that I think that just sounds like an absurd string of words. No, I think it makes a lot of sense because I, I think. Well, you, but you've had that experience, so I'm I'm wondering like for yeah. somebody who's never, like, had that before, like how do you have them start asking questions for the first time? Because like I'm not convinced everybody does that. You you need to be producing art. I think yeah. That's that's the key. Like, um, Secret like that's the difference day. between study and practice, essentially. Yeah. Like, if you're studying, you you kind of have to observe and stuff. But like, 
Um, practice is actually using what you learned to create something you want to create. And like you need to have this experience of wanting to create the thing in order for the studies to I'm, really I'm just be useful. I'm not convinced that they're necessarily mutually exclusive. That's I think that's what like what me and Peter are trying to say is that um, at least for us, since we've shared similar experiences with, with this um, observation can be like practice to me. Um, otherwise, there would be like no. It would be. I guess there's correlation causation thing here, but you know, like I was just saying, I come back after a long break and I'm definitely better, but I haven't touched a paintbrush in that time. Yeah. So like, I don't think it's necessarily mutually exclusive, whether or not it's, you know, correlation causation issue where, you know, maybe I just got better, but that seems a lot less possible than maybe perhaps observation is actually driving my skill. It's a it's an interesting open question. It's not one I think we're gonna have a conclusion on today. I'm I'm yeah, just yeah. asking it a lot because this is like the question of like, hey, if I want to teach people how to get better at art, what, you know, what am I trying to solve for? Because like, I have this suspicion that there's like, you know, in a lot of cases people learn these things because they're like really curious about it and so they keep asking questions and they keep getting answers and they keep going back to their work and seeing how they can apply those things that they've learned but then other people get insurmountably stuck really early yeah. on and it's um i really want to try to help people get past those early stuck stages because i mean like i think once people get rolling on on doing this kind of stuff even if you never turn it into a career, it's like, it's great to be able to like make things. Like it's a, if you don't have anything in your life where you're making something, I mean, you're living like a, a less interesting life than you could. Like, I, I'm gonna, there's, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I think, I think you're trying to solve an issue that maybe doesn't need solved. I think people who, <laughs> are motivated, hear me out, just hear me out. I think people that are motivated to actually hone their craft will make it past that initial hiccup on their own. And then the people that don't maybe- like, Everybody else, fuck them. No, <laughs> Lazy not, assholes, not, not, yeah. they don't get it. They don't, they don't get us. They don't get to be no, a part no, of this. You're not part of the turbo no. team. Does, just does, the geniuses okay, here. Get what I'm saying. We <laughs> no, I mean, I, generally, yeah, yeah. But like, is there a way to assist? Is there a way for an out a third party to assist in that process? But I'm, what I'm saying is, even if with the assistance, does that will that demographic necessarily like actually follow through? Well, that's what assistance is. Is like. <laughs> I mean, it, it uh, like the the hope is that it is possible to okay. be involved in the process in a way that's productive. Um, I mean, obviously, you're not. The, there's no way I could say I'm going to learn a, a way to teach someone to be a professional artist in X number of months. <laughs> sure. Almost yeah. everybody who's going to experiment with art is not going to have a career in art. Like it is only the tiny minority of people are going to pursue it that far and get to that level and also be with the right combination of luck to like be in the right place at the right time, have their, the thing that they're particularly interested in also be a, a skill that's valuable to other people. Like there are so many ways in which somebody could learn to get pretty good at art and then also never turn it into a career. So I'm not super interested in like solving the, that problem. But when it comes to like, Hey, can you enjoy drawing things because drawing stuff is fun and like yeah. draw things out okay. of your head and participate in a community where everyone is like doing art related stuff? Like, you know, um, I, getting to that point would, seems I, like it should be doable. I wasn't speaking from a point of arrogance because I suck. It's just like I've I've tried I, like I've tried to teach people miniature painting in the past, and it's just like they start getting good and then they just don't care and then they drop it anyways and it's just like 
okay, that was like a waste of my time. That was like a huge waste of my time because I was like really working with this person and they were improving. They're like, eh, like, yeah, I just realized that this whole thing just really so is me. is the problem that they're like how do you keep well I, the problem i keep thinking about in my head is like how do you keep people engaged like how, how does it like stay engaging that's, in the course of several months to like even want to bother yeah that's kind of what i'm saying mm. like, you can make the perfect mm. court for beginners right but it doesn't change the fact that you know you're still going to lose a huge portion of that demographic because they're beginners and they don't know if they actually like it in the first place. And then when they start really getting into the, the weeds, right? Because eventually everyone hits a point where like, oh shit, like I hit my first big wall and you're going to retain the people that actually really care and you're going to lose the people that just didn't in the first place. Uh, yeah, I, but I mean, I, I just, I can't imagine living a whole life not being, not making something. So oh, I mean, I agree. I'm, I'm here. I, I suck. I just still try to do something every day. So I, here I am. I'm drawing fucking cubes. For, for yeah, the, I mean, of creating, right? Like I'm sitting here and I'm unironically drawing cubes. I, because... I want to stress the, yeah. the point isn't the cubes. The point is just simple three dimensional objects. Yes, I understand that. Like, but okay, all right. I, I'm saying it like kind of as a as a joke. I'm, all right, okay. For the sake of getting better at something like art, I'm sitting here drawing 3D shapes. Gotta eat, your, in air gotta eat your vegetables. I get there. And that's that's like a hard ask of a lot of people. Like, in order to get good, I want you to do something like this. Now we yeah, that's month. some Karate Kid shit where you're just like, yeah, yeah. wax my fucking deck, <laughs> Daniel son. I'm gonna go <laughs> you know, read some wax on, wax on. <laughs> read some Japanese girly magazines in the other room. So that's uh, all I'm saying. I'm not speaking from a point of arrogance. It's just yeah, it's just I mean, a and, caution. Yeah, um, an easy way to keep like engagement, we could look back to how video games solve that problem, and yeah. how League of Legends manages to <laughs> keep millions of people engaged in that cycle of yeah, losing. Yeah, yeah we're gonna do art, stuff. but with really toxic and chat. Still. That's gonna keep people <laughs> here. Yeah, like, that's what magic. Ski, you're gonna get uh, screamed at by a thirteen year olds who are telling you that you're doing bot lane wrong. That's how we're gonna teach art. Fucking anime white expert. Do you see this shit? Huh? You see what Tsubu's doing right now? He's an anime waifu expert, dude. Oh yeah? Every uh, time I see him, I'm like, damn, dude, this guy's, like, got it down to a Oh, yeah, there we go. There's the, the booba coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> this is that high-level anime waifu gameplay right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, one thing about cubes, though, I would like to say real quick is, like, sometimes I get, like, really, like, down on myself. Like, oh, I can't draw anything well because... I'm just struggling that day, and so sometimes like just drawing cubes is actually really refreshing because it doesn't require. A oh lot yeah, of me. it's just like oh just, yeah, just draw like a bunch of lines and make them look like. I mean, cubes. you and saying like, oh, there's just no, draw cubes, and I'm just like, you know what? I, at first, I'm like, I'm past that, and then I'm like, actually, that sounds pretty good. Like, because it's <laughs> yeah. just like if I were to tuck in for two solid hours of drawing cubes. Like, I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm, like, succeeding or failing in some grand way. Like, all I need to do is spend time with the cubes. Exactly. Yeah, are you talking about a cube relapse? I've never done <laughs> cubes. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> that's, well, that's why It, it's it comes around every few months where I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I just need to draw cubes. <laughs> yeah, and then it's, like, fucking three weeks of cube drawing, and then you, you burn out, and you're like, I never, I'm never doing it again. But it always comes well, like, back. so, <laughs> so here's my back. secret bullet. Here is that I have a painting on the board that I need to finish in the next day or two. It's like I'm gonna pivot from studies to like actual imaginative painting, and like there's no way that I'm gonna be pulled away from that. Like, due to my other obligations, like I I am going to be doing imaginative painting. So mm -hmm. I'm never gonna end up in a study trap because I have like. Like I, I have an obligation to myself and other people not to. Yeah, I just draw fin boys to get out of the study trap, man. <laughs> That's that it works, dude. It's it's yes, like my you wanted thing to say now. something. Um, yeah, Pete. Earlier you were saying that like you keep running into difficulties with like 
motivating um, people who are just starting out to kind of like well, stick with? I've never, play? I've never tried it. It's like I haven't oh, okay. had a problem with it. It's like, it's like I just assume that like, you know, people they get uh, excited by the idea of a thing, but not the thing itself, and then they fall off. Like that's that's the normal way that people kind of pick up and put down yeah. hobbies. Okay. Um, well, so. Um, I think there's sort of like a, a level um, of like artistic ability before like anything I was talking about that people have trouble getting over. Like how often do you talk to somebody where they just like totally dismiss the idea of doing art because they always say the same thing. They can't even draw stick figures. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's most people. They have they they've never really even interrogated the idea of it and they just presume themselves to be awful. And I'm just like. I don't understand yeah. what the, I don't understand what the idea is behind that. Like I don't understand the motivation for, for I've that. I've given a lot of thought to like what I would do if I were ever to like put together like an art class. Um and um I figure and I, I, I just like got this idea from like Betty Edwards, but like I think um for people who are like just starting out, a lot of them need to see evidence that it's like actually possible to like right. learn how to draw. Um, and not from and some so master like, artist who's like, I used to suck like you, but now I'm amazing. Look at me. <laughs> like that's not uh, that's not motivating. Maybe you can be like me. Everybody. Can be yeah, like they me. need to see they need to see someone else go from like drawing stick figures to drawing like slightly better stick figures or like semi-realistic portraits or something like that. I'm yeah. here. That's what I'm here for. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be the, the, the proof. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm doing the fucking Bacchus. I'm here. I'm showing yeah. up. Yeah. So, like, for sure, yeah, what yeah, I would yeah. do Jez. is, like, get up. Jez, I want to add this to you. So, I taught for six and a half years, right? Huh. There's a couple of things that when you're when you're teaching, you know, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole with you about this, but not not right now, not with the what you guys are trying to talk about. But when I started... I was kind of like Peter said, you know, hey, I used to I used to be an adventurer just like you. you know? <laughs> uh, but um, I'm a very process based artist. You know, process is really crucial to how I do things. Um, and I also I was also was teaching when we were always talking about there are some artists that are bad teachers and there are some teachers that are good artists. You know what I mean? Um, if you ever really want to talk about teaching, I got good towards the latter part of my teaching tenure, and there's a lot to there's a lot to it. One of the most important things and one of the hardest things is trying to teach the student at the level they're at. And I've I've got two methods that I use that allow me to do that because I've worked with older people that are well, even older than myself who want to get into what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I've also worked with people who are children. And there's a lot to talk about there. But anyway, go on with what you were talking about. So, yeah, just wanted to share that with you quickly. So, OK, uh, I mean, I think you're su you're super right, um, like that there is some level of like assessment needed for like people cuz like there's no there's no one size fits all like tutorial that you can like give to everyone and it'll make everyone no matter where they're at a better artist. Yeah. Um yeah, um but yeah, I was just I was just thinking like it's probably if you're um trying to like convince people to like put in the effort necessary to be artists, they probably need to see some evidence that like the amount of work you're asking them to put in actually pays off. Yeah, that and also in addition to that, I'll, I'll give you. I want to give you an example of something very special. You have to know multiple ways of doing a singular thing, and mm -hmm. the best example I have of that is learning how to use a Wacom tablet, not a not a screen, but a tablet. Um, I used to have students roll in my class, and my class would like, I'm disconnecting all the mice in the lab. You have to master the tablet, um, and I'd have. I'd have possibly a third of the class crying. And I say, <laughs> if you don't like the tablet in pen mode, which is its default mode, where the tablet is equal to your screen, change it to mouse mode. I actually, I personally work in mouse mode because it feels more natural. That's crazy. And, it, and yeah. <laughs> every one of those people that complained 
when you change it to mouse mode, they suddenly got it and it made sense to them. So you have to be willing to throw away your own preconceived notions about how to do a thing and present them with the options so that they can master it for how they interact with the thing. And that's also where I discovered and came up with the term tactile dislocation. We have tactile dislocation with tablets, we have tactile dislocation with 3D printing, and to some degree it's also it's also something when you think about someone who's about to have a baby. You think about the thing, you think about the thing, you think about the thing, and it's, it's esoteric until all of a sudden the baby's here. Um, and not being able to touch the thing you know, that's something that a lot of us have to deal with. It's called, I, I call it tactile dislocation. That's the name I gave it. So, um, there, there's a lot of little things like that. But if you know that, if you know that failing, uh, that, that works for some people, but not for others, then you need to have, you need to present them the options. And that's what yeah. the teacher does. Uh, that's something I was thing. thinking about quite a lot when it comes to like writing a curriculum, because I don't think. A lot of people ask me to teach them my process, and I'm just like, you really don't want that. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> I have very little faith that, like, my process is something that people should be replicating. Um, and, you know, I think that, like, I want people to learn about their own process. But, like, when I was thinking, like, okay, well, I need to make tutorials, I'm just like, okay, number one, doing them in Photoshop is uh, feels like a bad idea because it presumes that people have access to Photoshop, a thing that is like not at all standard these days. Um, and then I'm like, okay, but then it also presumes like, hey, I'm doing all my drawing in on paper and bringing it into Photoshop, a thing which is not the right choice for the majority of people um, and very counterintuitive for somebody who's working digitally. So it's like, Starting even from the most fundamental levels, it feels like I'm, I'm like asking students to throw out everything about the way that I do stuff in order to begin learning, which doesn't doesn't feel like super productive. But um, I, I want to want to throw this to you, Peter. Uh, so one of the best things is, is that Photoshop more so than a lot of other things, but but some 3D for the most part, as possibly some of the sculpting tools. There's there's a lot more overlap than there ever used to be. So you can show someone a tool in Photoshop and say, this is how I do it in Photoshop, and these are the tools that I have access to. See if you have the same tools in your software. And yeah. some of those things may not be there. Like I think one of your tutorials a long time ago was how to do a gradient pass, I think it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's universal in photo editing software. So they just need to know where that is in their software, and then they can apply that to the software that they have access to. So I wouldn't, I would be concerned about that a little bit, but I think it's far less of an issue today than it was five, eight, I, ten years ago. I mean, I kind of disagree because it's like nowadays we have this big divide. Like the one of the biggest divides is um, desktop versus tablet. Right. And like that was never a thing before where we had two entirely different modes of d making digital art. <coughs> like, cause we, everyone, like whether you're not using painter or Photoshop was not so big of a deal. Cause you were at least all on a monitor and had a tablet and stuff. But nowadays, like um, the, I mean, it, like gradient maps don't exist, you know, or like um, even if gradient maps exist, like adjustment layers don't exist. Honestly, I gotta, where's the mute button? Why is, what's up? Line. Okay. Yep. Um, so I, the I, I suspect I suspect that you're right, and I agree with you. But I'm also I'm also still of the opinion that show them what you can show them, and then yeah. if they have access to it, great. And if they can't, from my perspective, they should figure out a workaround and be like, because okay. a great great artist is going to figure out workarounds because if you say to me hey eric i need you to do x and i'm like oh shit these are the tools i have access to um how do i make these tools do or achieve that goal i do that every day yeah um, <laughs> and, and i think that real artists real artists need to develop their problem solving skills and if they if they don't they're they're always going to be mediocre artists you know, yeah you, but you, when you're trying to teach someone the technical basics of software so that they can move on to the creative stuff having like it you, you like it almost feels like i need to make a you, 
a desktop version of it, yeah. which would apply across Photoshop, CSP, Krita, all pretty consistently, not really mm -hmm. a problem. And then do another one that's like, and here's for Procreate, because Procreate's fucking special in its own dumb way. Um, I, which it I would work across any kind of tablet-based painting program, but basically there is no market for tablet-based painting programs. Like, I mean, CSP works, but it like is it's just emulating its desktop counterpart. Okay. Um, but then, like you know, I, I'd say Infinite Painter works a lot like Procreate, but better. But also, no one uses Infinite Painter, so. I, okay, so so if that's the case, and which I assume you're right. Then, then really what you should focus on is not the tools, but the process. As in, this is how I apply layers, and this is how I apply paint. And, and just be like, if you don't have access to this, this, this stuff, guess what? You can't save every puppy in the pound, and I'm sorry that you can't. Oh, did he drop out? Oh, wait. No, Peter's still here. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I'm sorry. When you close, somebody closed out a window or opened a window, and I, I was watching you paint while I talked. Um, I, think, I think you can't, you can't, you can't help those people. I'm sorry, but you can't. Um, and 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 you you can f only focus on teaching them what you can teach them, um, and that's it's sad, but it's it's the way that it is sometimes, and that's not really. I wish there was a way to make that sound less of an asshole kind of statement, but it's, you know, not everybody has access. Yeah, I just I want to widen that access, and so I, I don't disagree with you. But then, if that's I, the case, then you focus more on the application and less on the tool. Yeah. Well, there's a. I, I want to make. Um. I want to make really easy to learn. Um. Version of like basic tool use stuff, and then create a bunch of curriculum for people that are is a lot more about general art education and process because learning the tools is not like the difficult or interesting part, but it is dead necessary for somebody who's never sat down at this stuff before. 100% agree with that. So um, and then I would do then I would do this. Hold on, just a moment. Let me, let me get this out real quick. Then yeah. I would do this. I would say, pick the 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 two biggest software and possibly a third software, and try and show some tools in all three of them. So you can say, these are the tools here. These are the tools here. These are the tools here. That's a hassle for you. Yeah. But it'll allow you to cover more bases and say, I'm primarily going to be using Photoshop. And you have access to brushes in all of these softwares, and you have access to this method in all of these softwares. But you're not going to have access to everything in these two softwares. Like, let's say this one doesn't have blending modes, but the other one does, and this other one down here doesn't have, um, I don't know, color variation tools, but this other one does, and Photoshop does. And then people can just be like, well, fuck me, I've got to make a choice. They're all going to be working in Procreate. <laughs> 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 that's 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 an option. Um, I, I I think the reason why everyone works in Procreate nowadays is because um, it, it's like there is a bias, there is an amateur bias towards uh, display tablets, mm -hmm. and people don't want to get specialty display tablets as much as they would like to have a general purpose tablet. So it feels like an iPad Pro is a, um, it's a more convenient option because it doesn't like lock you into just one activity. You can kind of lie to yourself and tell you're going to use it for more things and end up using it for nothing, <laughs> which is my case. <laughs> I, I very much understand that. I'm, but yeah. But like I, I taught a painting class at like um, a continuing education course at the local museum. Um, and it was, you know, mostly old ladies. And of course, they all own iPad Pros and Apple Pencil 2s. Uh, which is uh, just incredible to me that everyone walked through the door with like $3,000 worth of gear, having like never tried to draw before. And um, I think that's why, like, and I think the same, and then there was also a couple of uh, younger ladies in there too. Like, I get the sense that like, that's just sort of like, understood as default um, for a lot of people that like, hey, if you're all curious about this, but also you have other computing needs and also maybe like iPads are just cool, like people go and buy a multi-thousand dollar iPad Pro for no reason in particular. <laughs> and then like, you know, the idea of like, oh, I'm gonna get different gear to sit down in front of my PC, which I've got a whole PC workstation because I, you know, I'm a power user, but like, yeah. I don't know if most people have that. 
I, you know what, it blows me away how many people don't. But most of the yeah. people that I work with, most of the people that I work with are working in some aspect of 3D. And so they need to have, most people would prefer to, and maybe that's not right. A lot of people in, that are working in 3D are working with towers because it's like, this is where I'm working. But a lot of them are also heavy with the, uh, with the, uh, laptops and while that's it's a great tool i still look at it and i'm just sort of like every time oh, i see that somebody's like primary tool is like a 15 inch laptop yeah i just i, want, I can't imagine i feel like I, I feel like i could never relate to this person fully and i'm just I, like I, I have, you're how? just too rich man it's not a no it's it's <laughs> no it's like they're the same the cost laptop. to get a desktop pc as a laptop but the desktop pc is stronger and like it's more expensive to try to work on a laptop, and yet it seems to be the standard for people who don't have a ton of money to spend on gear. But it might end up being a real estate thing, like you don't have space to set up a desk, a dedicated desk yeah. area. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure or exactly what gear. leads I'm to it. Going to be able to take my expensive thing with me wherever I go. I've I've heard that, but that's the first that's the first statement uh, that I hear from somebody that left it in their car and got their window of the car broken because somebody yeah. wanted to steal well, it. I'm not I, okay. I, I'm, I, cool. and, 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 I'm like frugal and also not stupid. So I want something I can take with me. And guess what? I'm also just not going to leave it in the fucking car. So like, <laughs> I, you know, I will like, I will I will I will tell you right now the the mobile argument the mo mobile argument is 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 the weaker weaker of the arguments are that, you yeah. serious eric yeah. <laughs> well but here, here's the here's the thing here's the thing from this work area i am focused i have all my stuff here i have my tools my reference and i have access to everybody on the planet that has access to a phone or a computer end of subject when i leave my studio i leave my work behind and 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 i'm able to go out into the world and be in the world and i have a phone if i need if someone needs to access me the last thing i want to do is draw or paint or sculpt when yeah, I'm but, doing something else. I have a notepad. I have a notepad, and I like drawing on paper. If I'm going to go, if I'm going to go someplace and travel, I take a notepad and I've got my phone. That's yeah, but it. like, okay, not everyone is using a computer solely for work. So, like for me, this is my school. This is my. This is this is also my Discord. This is also my work because I have my work Discord stop on lying, here. Dude, stop lying to yourself and the rest of us. You want it for porn. <laughs> you're like, you're <laughs> in the bathroom porn. stall at McDonald's. It's yep. just the clearest thing. But the point is, is that like my laptop comes with me everywhere because I I have everything on my laptop. But if I were to have a workstation. And it was just for a workstation. Yeah, like I, I hundred percent get what you're saying, but from an ease of, of a, from a consolidation perspective, a laptop is literally perfect for like a student. You know what I mean? A student, a student, a student. Yes, but, but beyond that, you have so many limitations because of that equipment, and mobility doesn't, doesn't fix those You're limitations right. yes no no Th on, from a workflow perspective a laptop is like probably a terrible thing to have i don't disagree but i'm saying like you're mm. like why do people have laptops well it's because like you can't actually i'm, not, I'm not asking why people have laptops I, <laughs> I i know why people have them i know what their their benefits are but i also i also don't if if you if you were working for me as an engineer or as a scholar, oh, sure. If you said you were working on a laptop. I'd be like, be like, you're not going to be opening opening half the files that yeah. I want to send you. I got a file for I got a file for Tin Man from another artist that needed an engineering problem solved. It was a thirty million polygon model. Even <laughs> my rig was having trouble opening it, you know. And I'm like, all right, hold on a second. It's going to take a minute. You know, you know like, until um. A couple months ago, I was using one of those like hundred dollar mini PCs as my like main. <laughs> like that's good jazz. <laughs> well, you got the hundred dollar PC and a copy of Krita, and you're like, I'm fine. What's your problem? I mean, that's yeah. how I feel about it. Whatever. Exactly. I mean, like, my nobody laptop wants, nobody really wants works, and it doesn't things. operate without power. So, and it's like seven years old. 
It had like like it didn't even have like a graphics card. It had like a graphics chip that was like old when like Whoa. Skyrim came out. <laughs> yeah. Fucking woof, dude. But it'll run Krita, and as long as you don't put the resolution too high and don't use yep. too many fancy brushes, you're gonna be fine. Yep. Like I keep wanting. Yeah, like totally I tried playing like Remnant Two on this PC. And it was running like shit, and I was like, oh no, do I need to spend thousands of dollars on a new PC? And then I was like, well, technically, I haven't had a PC that struggled to run Photoshop ever, <laughs> so I can't justify it as a work expense. I'm like running through my head all the different ways, like, what could I use it for besides just the latest gaming? And I, I can't come up with a good <laughs> argument, and so like, it feels like the only reason to get a top-end PC with a good graphics card is specifically to play a handful of video games. Um, so I'm stuck. I'm going to be stuck on this machine playing in like, you know, potato resolution for Remnant 2, just stewing in it. There's a, I'm actually looking, I'm looking at a new rig right now, dropping five grand on the tower. What the fuck? Well, Sorry. for 3D stuff, yeah, if I was doing 3D stuff, totally. But for Photoshop, it's like deeply unnecessary. Yeah. Even even though should Photoshop is an absolute fucking pig, it can be. Yeah, yeah. But um, and like there's brush. If I'm working at a high enough resolution, brush some brushes will slow down pretty bad. But I, it's, I wish there was a way. I wish there was a way to kind of clamp it or clean it up a little bit so that it wasn't such a fucking pig. Because even on this machine, which is, it's a fair machine. I've got six cores. I've got sixteen gigs of RAM, um, and I've got enough scratch disk space to actually use Photoshop pretty well. Sometimes it's like, sometimes it's an absolute hog, and I'm just sort of like, you, you, they, there's no optimization. It's all brute force with Photoshop. And they're sort of like, you motherfuckers, let's get efficient, you know? But I'm not doing what you're doing, so. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm, uh, I, I wish I had a really good excuse to spend more money on hardware because I love buying new hardware. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just I don't have it and I don't also have like 5k to blow for no reason so I'm like I don't, I don't have 5k to blow either I've got, I've got to get a bunch of jobs taken care of and then I might be able to pick one up uh, I, think I'm done. I think I'm done with my daily study also I was getting some criticism a half hour ago that I'm running long I started a half hour late I wanted to do two hours uh, bu, bu, bu. Running long. Who who's telling you what? Isn't no, it your no, stream? No, it's my wife. <laughs> I look at that. Oh, I, yeah, that she's waiting on me for breakfast. Mind. Doing that's, breakfast that's at eleven. Fucking <laughs> so breakfast at eleven. Yeah, we usually do breakfast around eleven. Yeah, get to fucking cooking, Pete. That's chop chop. Get in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... I was I was up at seven this morning and uh, just going going going. Yeah, I mean I usually get up early and get going on stuff and then I eat like I eat around lunchtime and it's great and uh, then I don't end up having to eat three round meals a day because I don't end up getting hungry again till dinner aside for maybe a little snack time. Snack time. Yep. All right. So study's done for today. I'm posting it on the Discord. Let's see, do I, if I, does this work? Okay, yeah, there's the link for the Discord. Um, I'm posting my study on there. And that's where we're chatting from as well. What are you making for breakfast? Uh, I don't know yet. I, I hear sounds from the kitchen, so maybe breakfast is starting without my dumb ass, so. Um, I'm going to, I got my, my, Day, number study number thirty four posted, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce. Thanks everyone who came to watch. This is sort of a half test stream. We got some basic shit set up yesterday. I'm figuring out what the format's gonna be for this uh, thing going on, and uh, I'll be back five days a week to stream on here. Uh, around I think I'm gonna start streaming noon Eastern, which is a half hour from now. That way, like, cause like right now it's like I'm starting streaming. Today I started streaming at like 5 a.m. Pacific, which is like there are guys up at 5 a.m. but they are not sitting around watching Twitch. They are they're out there hitting the gym, you know, grustling, grinding, 
getting in their email <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning, doing their morning routine. They're getting their thousand crunches in or whatever, not watching this. Uh, mm. And so I'm gonna start at a time that's more reasonable across the United States and then unfortunately lock out some of the Europeans. Sorry, there's like no good time to do it so it hits everybody. I think that's part of the reason why they like Twitch likes like streaming for like super long sessions. But yeah, the, we're gonna we're gonna figure this format out. I'm gonna get good at it, and I'm gonna do it five days a week for at least the next three months. And over that course of time, I'm gonna get way better at art. I'm gonna do a shitload of cubes, and um, I'm gonna, I'm kind of curious if anybody like jumps in at this point, like if they do some studies along with me, how good they can get over like just a three month span, because. Um, That'd be an interesting challenge. I want to create, I want to bring in some people who are all like at the same level and create a cohort of beginners who are all at the same moment in their like learning. See if we can get I'm that. I'm putting my hand up for this first, for sure. Yeah, I wonder if like oh, we need a channel God. specifically for people who are just getting started so that yes. they're like posting yes. a, a, as a cohort. Yes, Has please. a controlled experiment ever been done on like art practice methods? Because uh, no, we could get probably. together like enough people, we could have like we could uh, we could test different methods and have like control just, groups and things like. Oh that. Oh my god, I'm so down. I want to be part of a fucking experiment. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz, you want to you want to administrate this experiment? You want to create the workflow for it and uh, and like organize it and stuff and be like, this is this is the Jazz's boys section over here. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean i could i could make like a curriculum like i like basically what i would be doing is i would just be like ha like handing people more or less the study routine like i gave myself yeah. to transition and from like doing studies to drawing out of my head yeah for sure i I'm people will end up very good at drawing treasure chests and anime girls by the end of it hell yeah i think it's funny because it's already working and i there was something that um that website you direct me to brought up that i hadn't thought about which was line confidence and i have been a lot more particular about the quality of my line work in just general while i'm drawing these boxes because it's a good time to practice right. it i gotta bounce end of stream so goodbye everybody <laughs> yeah. um